Yes, you've caught me on a wharf in Northland waiting to be picked up. I promise it's not how I spend every Friday night, but there is an electric vehicle on its way to collect me, and I think it's that one right there. Permission to come aboard, Captain. Yes, as you've probably guessed, in this week's video, we're hitting the water in electric okay. boats. Oh, there goes the bag full of cameras. <laughs> Do that again later. I like to make an entrance. <laughs> <laughs> and once we'd dropped off a tour group at the wharf, and I'd made a nautical dad joke. I don't want to worry you, but there seems to be a pretty big leak in this boat. <laughs> <laughs> we then went cruising through Keri Keri cleanly and quietly. Let's crack into it. Ready to go? Oh, this is wicked. You get paid to do this? I do, yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty cushy job, yeah. Okay, uh, my steering. <laughs> Steering, I think I'm overcorrecting a bit. That's it. It's very sensitive steering on that one because you're actually turning the whole motor under the water. Oh, the motor's turning, not just a rudder. Yeah. So, oh, so you, can, you can absolutely spin on the spot if you put the wheel all oh, the way oh, over. Sweet. Uh, so the motor is located in a pod under the water, and that keeps things very simple. The water silences it, and it also cools it. So there's no cooling system required. And there's only okay. basically one moving part, which is the armature of the motor with the propeller attached to it. So now that we're moving, Chris, tell me about these boats. What's the difference between these two? Uh, so this one is a replica of a 1920s electric boat. Electric boats have been around for a long time. And when the technology was developed for submarines in the First World War, after that, every millionaire wanted an electric boat. And it would have been one a lot like this, although it wouldn't have had the solar panels in the canopy at the time. Uh, so. Now this one has uh, solar panels. Um, she can go pretty much all day without charging with a bit of stopping time uh, and come back with a full battery. Oh, brilliant. Uh, the one you're driving has a similar battery capacity and we charge her at base, usually from solar power. You, you mentioned battery capacity. What is the battery capacity in these two boats? It's about 400 amp hours on that one and similar on this one at 24 volts. 24 volts? So okay. they're only running at 24 volts. Um, which is very safe to work on. Um, means anyone can do the maintenance. You don't need a registered electrician or anything. But the fact is that we're in two boats running right now and we can converse in a normal volume. Absolutely, yeah. That is madness, because yeah. I grew up around boats and I associate boats with ah, to get to your destination. Yeah, it's lovely. If you've got a group that's too big to fit on one boat, then um, Actually, you can spread the group across two boats and uh, yeah, you can motor along having a conversation just as we are. This is by far the most interesting interview I've ever done. <laughs> this is <laughs> wicked. <laughs> I'm going to insist all passengers or all future interviewees, we get in side by side cars or boats or tandem bikes or something. Absolutely, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so you obviously you, you, you do tours, but you also sell the boats and the components, right? That's right, yeah, we can supply either of these boats. Uh, the one you're driving, um, they're built in France and they're designed primarily for fleets of hire boats. Uh, so if anyone would like to start up a fleet of hire boats around New Zealand, we can set up the whole operation, um, the website, the booking system and the fleet of boats. And most importantly, all the licensing and the bureaucracy, we get that out the way for you. So gotcha. it's a complete turnkey system and you can have your own wonderful little business where you get to motor around on a lake or a river in a silent electric boat, guiding the customers about and having fun and getting paid for it. It's wonderful. Um, this one, um, these are a little more expensive because these are hand built in England. Oh, okay. Um, and you can have one of these made bespoke um, to, uh, to your own specifications and fit it out the way you want, either as a, a private electric yacht um, or for hire fleets. And um, these were popular as hire boats uh, back in the 1970s and 80s. Uh, although she's a replica of a 1920s boat, uh, she's built of fiberglass, which means she's very low maintenance. And they've been building these um, in England uh, since the 1970s to, to this design. Gotcha. But every one is a little bit different. Um, this is the only one with the canopy of full glass solar panels like this. She's unique in the world. Um, we found her on a lake in Switzerland and had her shipped to New oh, Zealand yeah. from there. So, I mean, it's not those. designed for speed, obviously. It's designed for comfort and, and hauling uh, people in actually, style. these are. The, the, these 1920s designs are incredibly efficient hulls. So there's two ways a boat can work. It can either play and it can lift right out of the water right. um, to go fast, and that requires an immense amount of energy. Um, the efficient way to do it is to make the boat longer so that you can go fast without lifting out of the water. So this is a beautifully long, slender hull shape. 
uh, with, uh, with smooth entrance and a rounded stern, so she makes no waves at all. And because of the length, she can go faster um, than the boat you're in, um, even with the same amount of power. This whole area is five knots limited though, right? That's right, yeah. Okay. So we have to put a limiter on this boat because she can, she can exceed the limit very easily. And What's, we have uh... to limit them to a bit less than, uh, than five knots actually, because once you get the wind behind you, that can, oh, yeah. <laughs> that can give you some extra speed. Why aren't more tour operators doing this? This is so relaxing, seriously? Well, there are thousands and thousands of electric boats like this in Europe and in North America. Uh, and we actually sailed to Europe a few years ago and, uh, and sailed into the center of Amsterdam and tied up there and on canals. And we found all the boats there pretty much were electric. Really? So why is nobody doing this in New Zealand? It just seems like a no-brainer. I mean, you say it can so go we came all day back long. And did it. All day long, it's emission-free, it's so Wow, we've got two boats running. Absolutely. You can't do that with a two-stroke. No. <laughs> this is brilliant. I mean, I'm biased. I, I love electric anything, but this is, you know, I, why wouldn't you do this? And if you can go all day long and it's comfortable and quiet and efficient as well, I mean, it's got to cost bugger all to run these things. Very, very little. Yeah, this one nothing because we're taking the power from solar. Right. And that one, we actually plug it in at base to solar power as well. We just collect oh, the solar power at base. Really? What size solar so, uh, array do you have? Uh, we've got six kilowatt solar array at base. So um, it's great having the power from e ecotricity because that carries us over through the winter and on cloudy days. Oh, brilliant. Uh, but the majority of the power that we use comes from direct from solar and the rest comes from uh, solar and hydro, hydro from ecotricity. So you're, you are carbon zero. This Absolutely. whole thing is all carbon zero. It's yes. all, all, oh, actually, I'm allowed to say something now that uh, it's just between you, me and the internet. Um, ecotricity, as of today, is not just carbon zero certified, it is now climate positive. Wow, big, that's good big going. thing. Not, no other power company has done that. Very few actual companies have done that. So that's pretty good. So if you join Ecotricity, now's a good time for a plug. If you join Ecotricity, you're kind of turning back the time on climate change. It's brilliant. You're buying future generations a happier, healthier future. How cheesy was that? <laughs> it's true though. Yes, I'm paid to say that, but it doesn't make it any less true. It's pretty good. And yeah, as an added bonus, 40% um, of the cost of the boats was funded by the, by the government, by the EECA, uh, as a technology demonstration project. So uh, if you'd like to use electric propulsion for boats in an innovative way, or indeed any other um, carbon neutral technology in an innovative way, you can get 40% of it funded. That is brilliant. See now, I'm not a boatologist, but I do know that boat maintenance and winterizing and engine repairs, it's, those are the main crippling factors of owning and man, you know, maintaining a boat, running Absolutely, a boat. Absolutely, yeah. Maintenance is, is a big thing when you own a boat. It costs more than buying the boat. Oh and really? the beautiful thing with these hire boats is you can just come down and use them whenever you feel like it. And the maintenance is our problem. Not that there is much maintenance on an electric boat. Uh, we still have to clean the barnacles off the bottom. That's, um, that's the worst well. bit. You can't avoid that. Um, but in terms of maintenance on the motors, you just change the seals every couple of thousand hours running um, and there's very little else to do. We'll pass close to this catamaran, leaving it on our starboard side. Okay, gotcha. No, port is left. Left and port are both four letter words, red. Porter's read the drink. <laughs> yep, I've done my research. I'm, I used to have a P-class yacht when I was a kid. Oh yeah. Um, oh, so you know a bit about sailing. Then. A little bit about yeah. sailing. I wouldn't say I've got semen in my veins. It's got to be a better way to say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll rephrase that. <laughs> so yeah, do you fancy heading straight up to the pub? For, uh... Always. Yeah. Okay. That's um. That's the beauty of Kerry Kerry River, is we actually have a waterfront pub that you can visit uh, in the middle of your hire. You had me at pub. Pop out for a quick drink <laughs> and then back to base. It's wonderful. All right. um, so having a destination like that really adds something to the trip. And, uh, and yeah, then when we get there we can swap boats and you can bring this one back. Alrighty. And as we made our way to the pub, Chris took us down an estuary which, because of the quietness of the electric boats, allowed us to hear absolutely everything. What a way to travel. The loudest thing on this river right now is cicadas and ducks and shags. Why wouldn't everyone just want to cruise through a quiet river running on renewable electricity? 
Oh, what a wonderful, tranquil spot it is here. It's so quiet. I was just yeah. saying to camera that... It's the, a shame to talk at all. The loudest thing in, the, in this place, once we got rid of that combustion engine back there, the loudest thing is ducks, shags and cicadas. Absolutely, yeah. Imagine what a shame it would be to come up here with a petrol engine and oh, shatter that yeah. silence. Oh, oh, it's bare o'clock judging by that bare alarm. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so let's turn around and uh, we'll go find the pub. Uh, you'll see mine takes a little bit of effort to turn around because right. she's got a conventional rudder and a propeller well, um, with a fixed shaft, whereas yours the whole motor turns so you can just spin on the spot. Oh, look at that. Oh, we're turning on the spot. And with the detour complete, we made our way to the destination, the pub in Keddy Keddy. So as we come around the corner here, you'll see uh, first the Plough and Feather pub, which oh, is wow. a traditional English pub and restaurant, and they do pizzas out in the beer garden, oh, so it makes a wonderful destination. Oh, right. And then next door to it there, you have the Stone Store, the oldest stone building in New Zealand. And to the right of that is Kemp House, which is the oldest house in New Zealand. And behind Kemp House is the Honey House Cafe, which is a lovely spot for a coffee or a cake or an ice cream. So this makes a wonderful destination for an electric boat trip. That's nice. Oh yeah, see Chris has got the skills. See, he's going to do a spin around action. I'm going to just take the power off. Oh, he's done that before. That's cheating. Time to pretend I know what I'm doing. That's it, keep it nice and slow. The wonderful thing with electric power is you've got complete control from zero revs upwards. Well, you say you that. You can't stall it. <laughs> and uh, there's no minimum tick over speed, so you can come in as slow as you like. In my mind, that was going to look a lot better than it was. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nobody died, it's a win. After all that eco-friendly cruising, we'd earned ourselves a pizza with a view before taking the boats back down the river where I then had the chance to play with four very different electric boat motors for very different applications. That comparison video is coming very soon, so press the subscribe button now as not to miss it. Right. Otherwise, I've got to thank Chris from electricboat.co.nz for tolerating me for an afternoon, and thank you all for watching and for those of you who've joined Ecotricity after seeing these videos. You guys all rock and we'll see you next week.